This is Matt Walsh with your Minute with the Mayor for Tuesday, September 8th. According to coronavirus.iowa.gov, Pottawatomie County has had a total of 18,561 individuals tested for COVID-19, with 1,722 of those individuals testing positive for an overall positivity rate of 9.3%. Our 14-day average positivity rate, in other words, the last 14 days of tests is currently at 9%. So things are improving slightly. The dashboard also shows that we've had 34 deaths related to COVID-19 and 1,465 of those patients have recovered. Pottawatomie County is working with 227 active cases, six of which are currently in local hospitals. The outbreaks at Risen Sun and Oakland Manor are in their final stages of recovery with only one active case at each site. In 1918, a novel strand of influenza known as the Spanish flu killed more people than a 14th century's Black Plague. At least 50 million people died worldwide because of the H1N1 influenza outbreak. It's not clear exactly how or where the 1918 influenza began, but at some point, the novel H1N1 virus passed from birds to humans. Very few people had ever contended with a concoction of influenza like this before, which is why it was so potent. The Spanish flu could burn through a town or a city in a matter of weeks. Seasonal influenza tends to kill the oldest and the youngest in society, but in 1918, roughly half of those who died were men and women in their 20s and 30s. People were getting sick and dying in the primes of their lives. As many as 8 to 10 percent of all young adults then living may have been killed by the virus. How did the deadliest pandemic ever recorded come to an end? That strand of flu didn't just disappear. Reports at the time suggested that the virus became less lethal as the pandemic carried on in waves. In 1920, the influenza virus was still a threat, but fewer people were dying from the virus. The longer the influenza virus existed, in a certain community, the less lethal the sickness was. Over time, those who had contracted the virus developed an immunity and life returned to normal by the 1920s, according to historians and medical experts. In 2009, two influenza experts at the National Institutes of Health co-authored an article with Anthony Fauci, which explained how the descendants of the 1918 influenza virus have contributed to the pandemic area that has lasted the past 100 years. At the time the article was published, the H1N1 influenza virus was the public concern, and it was considered a fourth generation descendant of the novel virus from 1918. The 1918 flu is still with us. It never went away. Mutated viral descendants of the 1918 flu virus actually make up influenza viruses that we're fighting today. There are similarities to draw between today's pandemic and the influenza outbreak of a hundred years ago. Both came from winged animals, one from birds and the other from bats. Both are respiratory viruses. Both led people to wear masks in public. Both forced cities and schools to shut down for periods of time. And finally, in both cases, the country's leaders exasperated problems by ignoring the early warning signs. Despite all that, influenza viruses and coronaviruses are not the same. Recognizing both the similarities and differences to past pandemics can provide a meaningful mirror to the present. The million dollar question is, what can the 1918 novel influenza outbreak tell us about how our current novel coronavirus pandemic may end? The sad answer is likely not very much. The operative word in both pandemics is novel. The definition of the word novel is new and not resembling something that is formerly known. We're tasked with learning as we go along, and it's only been six months. While our understanding has broadened, we still don't really know all that much. That's your minute with the mayor. Be kind and wear a mask.